everyone, this is Lisa from Canine Clips Dog Grooming Tips, and this is Emma, and Emma is a Shih Tzu, and she's coming for her full groom today, and I'm going to show you the full video of that. I'm going to try to keep her as long as I can, but she does have quite a few mats in her, um, so I'm going to do my best to keep her as long as I can, um, but she is quite matted, um, as you can see in her leg here, and in her chest, and just throughout her body as well. So we're going to do our best to keep her as long as I can. And I am going to shave her face. Uh, Emma here has only one eye. So the owner likes to shave her face really short with the pen blade so that she can see a little bit better for a little bit longer. So I'm going to start with the number five and see if I can get through those mats. And if I can't, I will go to a shorter length. It's quite heavily matted right here, and I, it's already pulling, so I'm not going to continue to uh, use that number five. I'm going to go down to a number seven, and when I do work with the, I do use the split tooth combs for this, if they're matted, well, and actually all the time. I prefer the split tooth, as it helps with all these mats. getting under them and then not having to pull as much to get through. Now I'm just going to add a little oil to my clipper blade. There we go. Hopefully that will help. It sounded like it was hesitating a little bit, so I'm still doing it a little bit here. Yeah, so I'm going to switch. Another number seven. Sometimes when they're starting to get dull, they'll give you that hesitation. Giving you kind of like a warning that it's time to get sharpened. So when there's matting, I like to do just a little bit at a time. Emma's been coming to me for many, many years, so. So it's still a little tight here in the legs. I'm just going to slowly go through it here. So this first cut is just trying to get the bulk of it off, get any matting out. Once I get all that done, I'll clean up her face and feet, nails, ears, and then I'll give her a nice bath. And once I'm done with that, I'll uh, do another full groom on her to even it all out and really finish it up. It's pretty flexible. Thank <laughs> you. 
Then you twist it right over there. Okay, and you always want to make sure you're, you're checking your blades to make sure they're not getting too hot. Especially if you're grooming before the bath. I also have some videos of me when I um, trim the face, feet, and bum before. Um, before I give her a bath, then I bath her, then I trim the body when it's kind of damp, and that helps to keep the clippers, clipper blades a little bit cooler for longer. That's a good technique if you're just starting out, or you don't have a lot of blades to switch. You should at least have two, because that gives you a little bit of time to switch them out. Some other techniques that I used to use when I first started out was uh, I'd groom the body for a little bit and then when the blades got too warm then I'd switch to doing the feet for a little bit. And if I got tired of that, do a little bit of the ear. Like just, you can do it in whatever order you want, it just all has to get done at some point. So if you need to take a break from one area and move to the next, whatever works kind of thing. And when I first started, it probably took me about, it was about three and a half hours to groom a dog. So definitely with uh, experience and over time you will get faster and more comfortable. And that your dog will know what to expect from you. But I have lots of videos on my channel of me grooming a whole bunch of different dogs, some uh, not as uh, nice as uh, Emma here, well behaved, got a few little rambunctious little puppies and some, uh, some anxious dogs and some nippy dogs that have do their best to leave their impression on me. But even with those guys, I don't need to restrain them. I have uh, techniques that I've kind of gotten better and better at over the years where I don't have to restrain. And even if they are nippy, um, I use a comb for that. So just under your armpit, there's some heavier matting. So I want to use the number 10 so I don't grab the skin. It doesn't catch in there as easy, especially when they're a little bit older. So it's kind of tugging in there. Yeah, I'll move her over. Hopefully you can see a little better. She likes to lay, so it's a little hard for you guys, I think, to see. But hopefully you get a good idea of what I'm talking about. You can see how that skin really moves in that area. So that's why it's good to... There we go. Get that out. I'll just switch back to the number seven. And we're gonna go under her chin here. And I'm gonna be shaving her muzzle and chin really, really short, so we can get give us some nice viewing from that one eye she has. So it's not, her vision isn't blocked. And we'll keep the body a little bit longer. Matting permitting.
Okay, so I'm going to use the number 10 here while she's laying so nice on this side. It looks pretty comfortable. Just going to do inside this leg since she's staying nice and I can see that there's some heavier matting in there as well. So this will allow me to get underneath all that. Especially with all this loose skin in here. gets kind of the bulk of those mats out. <laughs> well, again, since she's here still, I'm going to do her face. So you can see her beautiful eye in there. Let's go from the middle of the nose, the middle of the eyes, and come straight down to the, to the nose. a few years ago. Alright, and there we can see her face at least. Good girl. She's pretty relaxed. So we're going to continue on with the other side of her body. sure that you know where the edge of the ear is, especially with clippers, because you don't want to snag that in the clippers. So I always try to fold those over so I don't accidentally catch it in the ear in the clippers. Real easy to accidentally trim those because it's especially when it's matted and you already kind of got some resistance. You don't really think too much of that extra resistance. I'm just going to add some more oil. A little bit of extra matting under that chest area. So I'm going to have to come back with it, number 10. And I'm going to switch these.
I'm just going to switch to number 10 to get under that armpit. Under that chest, I want to get there. There we go. All right. Slowly getting through all those. So I'm hoping that uh, once I get through and under all these mats, that after oops, that one doesn't like it. Um, I'm gonna have to. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to use the number five to finish so that'll give a little bit of length. So you can see that there's still, you know, it's not very even. And I'm not worrying about that. I'm just really trying to get under all those mats. So it's really important to get that finished look. You gotta go over it again. Right now, I just want to get that bulk off. view of her. Less view of me. <laughs> I'm actually standing for a bit. Pretty sure I'm interrupting her nap time. No, 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 Okay, so I got the outside of the leg done. So the inside of the leg, I'm going to use a number 10. Then I'll go over all the sanitary areas as well with the number 10. Keep those all nice and clean. And obviously it's quite matted in here, so it's nice to get that quite a bit closer. And that's the area that gets uh, you know, wet and dry, wet and dry, especially when they're walking in the snow here. Um, but also just, you know, because of pee and all the other wonderful dog things that may stick down there. I'm going to trim the tail a little bit up as well. Because it's matted there.
her body trimmed up just roughly so now I'm going to work on the feet and nails and ears before I get her in that bath so if you've seen any of my other videos you'll know that I like to use scissors for in the feet I find it keeps them a little bit calmer and I have a little bit more control. I might as well just let her lay because I know she likes to. So no point in having her stand. If she doesn't like it. So this way I'm able to, uh, you know, let the dog sit or stand a little more easier. some videos of me using the clippers and scissors and to kind of compare the using either one either one is still good it's just what you prefer I find I always have to finish up with scissors after the clippers but that's just me And just, it seems like the dogs are calmer. And I am very careful with the scissors in there. Although it does look pretty scary. And they do quite go quite fast. But again, that's because I've been doing it for 16 years. So when you start out anything, you're going to be a lot slower. But I do use this method on all my dogs. So even the ones that are aggressive and resistant, a little bit nippy, or just ones that don't like their feet being done and uh, kind of move their feet quite a bit so they tug them and move around on me. So we've got to have uh, pretty good strong hands for that. They're a little bit resistant, but not too much. You're just pulling a little bit. She's got a little bit of matting in here, so I'm guessing that her feet are a little bit sore. Once you get all that out of there, that should alleviate that. Yes, you're okay. No, no, don't move.
some of that head off. And I'm going to do a little bit shorter, just because we got such a short, short muzzle and shorter body. They're all kind of growing together. Even when I shave the face, I find I still got to go right near the eyes with the, with the scissors as the clippers don't get close enough. I don't want to be digging in, in there with the clippers. Still got a lot of hair up there. There we go. ears I like to get right as close as I can to the outside of the ear canal so I get all that cleaned out uh, so I can pluck the inside but I don't want to pluck this hair on the outside because it is a little bit thicker and it would be a little bit more painful than that hair on the inside there we go good girl okay so we got those two done Again, since she's laying nice for me here, I'm going to work on her ears. Less movement for her. So she does have quite a bit of matting. So I am going to be thinning it out. Well, actually, I am going to be doing more than that. It's quite thick here too. So I'm actually going to take them down. And we've done that before with her. It's whatever's best for her because combing that out would be very painful because it is um, the majority of the ear. So sometimes if the ear's a bit matted, I can kind of thin it out. But uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, cut it off. And then we're going to work with what we got left. So first you need to find out where the edge of the ear is which is right there so i place my thumb there because it is so thick that it's hard to tell there we go especially when you have that much resistance you want to make sure you know where that edge of that ear is because it wouldn't be hard to cut through that ear and not even know it Okay, so I am going to kind of round up the ears. And again, I'm using my thumb as a guide. There we go. So there's still some matting in there. But now I'm going to use the thinning shears. Because I won't have as much to go through. Still going to find that tip. I'm going to make sure I thin it out nice. All right, and then when we comb it out, it shouldn't come out too hard because it doesn't have as long to get out of there. There we go. There, so you can see just in that little piece I had there, how much there was. There we go. There, and that's all the matting. Just gonna get the inside here. There we go. Yeah, 
good girl. I'm just trying to clean that up again. I always kind of talk with the owner at the beginning to see what they like to see done. Um, but I always, you know, let them know it depends on the matting um, because I do want the best for the dog. So I'm not going to torment the dog by cutting all that, or combing all that out and causing that stress to them. As you can see, it wasn't too stressful for her. Okay, so we're going to do the other ear. And I think it's in the same kind of situation. But even if it's not, obviously i got to even it out to the other side. So I always kind of, you know, figure out which one's worse. And I do that one first because then you make the other one to match. Because it doesn't really matter what you can do the other one if it's better if you have to cut the one side shorter. So you kind of want to even them out. Doing it a little backwards, but we'll still get my point. All right, just gonna cut that off. And there we go. Sometimes you can salvage them, but it does thin them out quite a bit. So um, depends on how much is left. If you decide to cut it afterwards as well. All right, so that was all matting there. Okay, so I got the, all the bulk of that out. Now I can just round those out. There, and they're still a longer rounded because her ear is just right here. So it's still left, you know, still a bit of her ear, but it did trim it up quite a bit as well, obviously. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and pluck her ears because again, she's just so staying so nice in this position. I want to get her to move if I can just finish off something else. That one ear, so it's still like quite a bit in there. But when it gets all that out there, it's got a little bit of wax build up on it, but ears are still very nice and healthy. Okay, and then to the other side. And that little pop. Oops. That was me um, touching the inside of her skin in the ear. So you have to, as soon as you have any resistance like that, you have to release it so you don't cause any redness in there. So when you're pulling there, as I am, so there you heard it again. 
So you just kind of release right away as soon as you hear any um, anything or have too much resistance, basically, because that hair in there should come out quite easily. There, and I don't like to pull too much at once because that will cause a discomfort for her. So now I'm going to work on these feet. You can see she looks pretty choppy on the top there. But once I get her bath and her second cut, then that'll kind of finish it up. Okay. As much as I'd like to think that, uh, or hope that her kisses are a sign of affection, it's really her telling me to uh, you know, leave her alone already. She's ready for her nap and wants to be done. Kind of, kind of way to distract me. I hope I'll let her go. A little bit here and there, but if they're excessively licking you, that could be a sign of aggression as well. Or that, you know, that they're getting a little bit more fed up. No, that's enough. They stay. Okay. I know. I know, you're getting tired. Do the same with the tail as I did with the ears, just thin them out. It's got a few mats here and there, but it's not one solid mat, like this is all good here, just right at the closer to the base. So I'm just going to get that thinner and we'll see how much actually comes out. Usually it still looks pretty good, and I will trim it all up. So 
so it's not as long as well. be ready for the bath here. All right, there you go. So there's the tail. What I got out from there. One right there. Okay, so just uh, now it's time for the bed. cut the hair before the bath. You always got a lot of loose hair there that comes off when you rinse her off. So it's good to have some tub stoppers or sink stoppers in there to catch that loose hair. Otherwise it'll put a lot into your pipes. If it's just your own dog it's not a big deal. No different than you losing your hair. And it's always small, fine hairs that are coming off. But uh, if you're doing more than your dog and want to stop and prevent your, you know, poor pipes from clogging up there, that will be one step you could do. It is surprising how sometimes how many how much hair comes off in the bath. I just kind of let her drip off a little bit, do a little hand squeegee, and this uh, helps get, you know, some of that bulk moisture off, but also um, to see if there's any uh, soap residue. So if there is any, I do want to rinse, give her another quick rinse, because when that soap were, were to dry, it would make her very itchy, so we do not want that. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the table. And 
give her a blow dry and her final trim. Sorry about that. I try to try to keep checking the camera, but sometimes I get a little distracted with the puppies. Okay, so we're gonna put her little ear protection on. Okay, we'll give her a nice blow dry. switch to number five as I mentioned before to give her that final cut so you can see with after the bath it kind of poofs everything up a little bit so that's hopefully how I'm going to be able to keep a little bit of length for her um, but obviously there's still some shorter spots because of the matting but this will kind of blend it together so I can kind of do two different lengths on her to keep as much length as I can And she's got enough little curl in her hair there that it'll blend. But you can see definitely, you know, where the legs are were a little bit matted. It's still a little bit cleaner there. And this doesn't really take anything off. A little bit down here. It still just makes, blends it nice.
Okay, so you can see that doesn't take off a lot of hair, but it does uh, end up blending it a little bit better. So I'm able to leave you know, as much length as I can for her. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick little blow dryer just of her body and then I'm going to leave the uh, headgear off this time because she did so good, but I'm going to keep the blow dryer um, away from her head so it's not as close just to kind of get it blow dried a little bit. surprised on how well she does with that blow dryer. Good girl. Most dogs don't like it near on the head, but it didn't seem to phase her, so that's why I kept going a little closer. That way I can get that finished look on the head as well. We're just going to comb out her ears again. There we go. Checking to see if the ears are the same. There we go. There we go. So there's our Emma all finished. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, you'll check out other videos on my channel of me grooming dogs all without restraints. And usually within just under one hour of grooming. You know, please comment, let me know what you think and what you'd like to see, if there's something different, or if you just have any questions. I'll be happy to help you out when I can. So thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again.